Welcome members and guests. This is Joanne Obata. Uh, I, can I remind my uh, club members to mute themselves while uh, the meeting's going so that we can uh, eliminate background noise? So my name is Joanne Obata, Interim Vice President Secretary for the International Model Investment Club. We are a better investing model club open to the public. All of our meetings and stock studies are virtual, allowing us to have members from the US and around the world, including Canada and China and Singapore. Uh, I am filling in for Mina, our president. Uh, he will be joining us a little later in, during the meeting. Guests, as observers, you'll be muted during the meeting and we'll have an opportunity for questions and comments once the meeting ends. Any companies presented today are for educational purposes only and are not intended to be a recommendation for buying or selling any stocks. We ask that you conduct your own review and analysis of any company of interest before making an investment decision. Hello. This meeting may mention products for services not endorsed I'm by the, the meeting and I was surprised no one said anything to me. Um, we can hear you, whoever's okay. talking. Yeah, okay, bye-bye. Uh, the views expressed are those of members and do not necessarily represent those of Better Investing. This meeting is also being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel for future use. Now I'll quickly go through um, our uh, ground rules for our guests. Um, a little bit about our background. We were founded in May 2016. We are a, bet, uh, a model club open to the public. We also have monthly meetings that are held on the third Monday of each month. In December, we meet on the second Monday of the month. Uh, we use hypothetical money. This avoids issues with currency exchanges and taxes since we are in multiple countries and states. All, all meetings are held online, serving visitors and guests from around the world. Our primary role is to be a learning lab and to learn better investing principles and the fundamentals of stock investment using the online stock selection guide. And we are an international community, currently have 12 members from the United States, Canada, China, and Singapore. So for our guests, the agenda is available in the handout section of the control panel to your right. All visitors and guests will be muted during the meeting and may post questions in the questions section. At the end of the stock presentations, visitors and guests will be unmuted and asked for their comments and questions. This is, I've already gone over our disclaimer, but we have it, also have it in writing. Okay, so um, now I will go to our agenda and we will go to Ready. Are you ready to give your treasurer's report? Ready? Are you online? Oops, I'm online. Okay. Um, Jay, can you give Ready the presentation? I mean, the, make him a presenter. Oh, there yes. we go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm giving the treasurer report for the month of December, 2021. Uh, La, la, during the last one month, uh, we have uh, Haney Michael, no buys and no selling of stocks last month. Uh, Haney Michael announced a withdrawal on, uh, la, during the last meeting. And the, I deposited for this month uh, $1,200 for $100 each member. And as of uh, now, the current cash balance is $3,272. Uh, if we pay payout due amount to Henry Michael is a uh, little over eight thousand. Uh, we have we can delay this for next month, but still we may not be able to have enough cash to pay down. Uh, we have to discuss that today. <clears throat> um, this is the uh, heat map for uh, our stocks and uh, total amount. Um, this is this includes uh, by the way if we pay out. Any Michael today. Um, our, our our largest holding is uh, Vertex because we bought few more shares in November. 
uh, the club performance uh, we are doing uh, re reading in in the red for irobot and franco nevada and uh, lgi homes but the, these some of these are recently bought we have to wait a little longer to see their effect and um, amazon also gain is not that much um, club performance uh, we are doing good compared to uh, other two indices uh, vfinx and uh, vt smx uh, those are vanguard 500 index and the vanguard stock indices uh, you can I'm see sorry, you're ready could you please put the full view the slideshow view so that you can see better oh. thank you it will be bigger thank you okay okay uh, <clears throat> compared to the two indices uh, for comparison um, we are doing um, the 15.61 versus little long range time lifetime is uh, yeah, a little under uh, one year we didn't do, do that good but uh, three years we are okay five years we are okay um, this is the companies these are all the companies that we have uh, we have we may have too many companies for the size of the club but um the largest portfolios are uh, the market share is again vertex and iapr and schwab uh, company size diversification again that is the, the inner circle represented we are doing okay mid-size uh, nearly 50 percent uh, uh, mega is about probably 35 uh, percent this is 11% uh, large and all others are small. Um, sectors wise, uh, your largest sector is communication services, and financial services and health. Uh, we may have to think about reducing the communication services to lower the share. Uh, industry diversification, uh, again, we have good amount in uh, largest amount in internet and uh, biotech. Uh, that's my last slide on the treasury report. Any questions? Thank you, Reddy. Okay, uh, let's see what we have next. I'll take the screen. Okay, uh, next we have uh, Carol Crosta to will do an education piece on uh, for our education. And I would like to introduce Carol. We are very okay. delighted to have Carol Crosta to be our guest speaker tonight. She is my inspiration and mentor. Carol is a director with the Sacramento area chapter of a better investing. She also has served as a director on the National Board of Abet Investing, as well as serving as a regional manager of the West Coast region and the Mid-Eastern region of the Abet Investing. Currently, she is the president of the Sacramento Area Chapter Model Investment Club, as well as another club. She has taught investment education classes, both locally and nationally for the past 20 years. Tonight, Carol will talk about what a real estate investment trust read is and the advantages and the risks involved. Carol, you can, the floor is yours. Uh, okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can hear you. Okay. Um, one other thing I um, can mention, um, I'm deemed a real estate professional by the IRS by the fact that I have rental properties and we run them as business. So when you follow the IRS rules, you, if you do it right, you, you are a real estate and professional. And the other thing I wanted to know before I started, are you all doing SSGs on your REITs when you're buying and selling a REIT? Yes, we are. Okay, we're good. Um, this presentation, I'm not exactly sure where we should be going with your club because normally I wrote this presentation for people who are not familiar with REITs and it's intro an introduction to investing in REITs. So um, 
I'm not positive where to start. I have an outline, but the outline may be too basic for you guys. So I think you can, I think it would be okay. Go ahead, Matt. It's not too basic for me. You can yeah, it's not too basic. Yeah, Carol. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's what, <laughs> yeah, please start with the basic. That would be very yeah. helpful. Okay, and if I get too boring, let me know. <laughs> okay, um, I, I start with the definition of what is a REIT. It's a, uh, a real estate investment trust is a closed end investment company that owns assets related to real estate, such as building, land, and real estate securities. REITs sell on the major stock market exchanges just like stocks sell. Um, how does it work? First of all, if I wanted to start a REIT or you did, you have to raise some money from your friends to get started. And then you'd have all this money to uh, um, buy real estate. And then you would raise money for your portfolios by selling shares on an exchange. REITs are legally required to distribute at least 90% of their taxable income to investors each year. And that's an important um, thing to know as a real investor, not in your um, club, but is how you're taxed. Uh, REITs are taxed at your personal income tax rate, not as qualified dividends. So that's why investment clubs do not want to have REITs in their um, portfolio because the treasurer would go nuts every month figuring out each individual's um, tax rate. And um, so I like the fact that you can do this in your club because you don't have that tax thing to worry about. Um, and the income comes from rent, managing fees, and the leasing of properties in any REIT. And why does it matter? Um, it's a powerful way for individuals to invest in real estate. It's more liquid by buying or selling on an open market. It offers the relatively predictable revenue stream that one expects when collecting rent from a tenant. On average, REIT pay two to three percent higher dividend yield than the S&P 500. Um, and I mentioned about the 90 percent of the what they have to distribute. So that's a high amount of income they have to distribute every year. It, they're associated with high dividend yields. They have tangible assets that make them a stable and low volatility equity. And this is important. It causes them to grow more slowly than the S&P and Dow Jones Industrial Averages. And what's important about that is don't pay too much for a REIT. If you accidentally pay too much for a stock, especially in this last year or two, you were able to make up that money in a couple months and you weren't down. But in REITs, they don't grow in those leaps and bounds. So make sure you're paying the right price when you buy a REIT. Um, uh, why do you buy it? I mean, they're, they're very uh, similar to investing in real estate. They're generally lumped in with other stocks. Over the long term, their performance will more closely match the performance of the real estate they own. And they've historically generated higher returns. Um, when you're buying REITs, um, people who buy rental houses uh, usually take greater risk to achieve subpar results than a REIT investor does. REITs grow their cash flow at a faster rate because of better access to different capital sources not available to private investors. REITs are more efficient, more efficient at minimizing cost and mitigating risk. And some people use them as a substitute for bonds. And that's a debatable question whether that's true or not, but some people see them that way. Um, advantages. Some people say uh, REITs are the gold standard of income vehicles for retiree investors because they pay high dividends, they consistently hike payments, they have safe payout ratios, it's a, a protection against inflation, it has lesser volatility, and they provide valuable um, uh, diversification benefits. Um, now, how, how do we compare rental property in, in REITs? Many people who traditionally invested in real estate often do not trust or bother to understand the stock market. The opposite is true. Most people who invest in stocks are uncomfortable with real estate. 
And what happens is many people appear to ignore the third option, which combines the positive attributes of stocks, which is liquidity and passive, liquidity and passive management with the benefits of real estate, higher total returns. Um, if you have some rental property, single family houses have appreciated about three and a half percent a year for the last 25 years. They require a lot of work. Tenants may damage your property. Rents can get unpaid. You might possibly get sued. Rentals are illiquid. You have the three T's if you're a landlord. You have tenants, trash, and to toilets. And all of those can be nightmares. And the other thing to know about rental property, rather than thinking of it as an investment per se, you, in reality, you're buying a small business. There's a lot of work to do in taking care of rental property. Uh, I'm going to read you this quote that Warren Buffett had on CNBC eight or nine years ago. I think it's very interesting what he thinks. Uh, Warren Buffett said, if I had a way to buy a couple hundred thousand single family homes and have a way of managing them, I would load up on them. I would take mortgages at very low rates. It is a very attractive asset class. If I was an investor who was a handy type, which I am not, I would buy a couple of them at distressed prices, find renters, and again, take a 30-year mortgage. It is the leveraged way to own a cheap asset. I think that it is probably as attractive as an investment that you can make. And I thought that was really interesting for Warren Buffett to say that. How did Buffett um, solve that issue? He never found a way to solve the management issue. He never loaded up on rental properties. He figured an alternative way to invest in real estate with liquidity and passive management. Buffett now owns 9.8% interest in a REIT. The REIT that he has this in is Store Capital Corporation, S-T-O-R. And it stands for Single Tenant Operational Real Estate. Buffett only owns 9.8% of store capital. The reason being, if he owned 10% or more, he would come under US security laws. He'd be considered an owner, have to face more issues with them. So at 9.8, he's only, just like you and I, a normal investor, and that's the way he likes it. Um, there are two major categories of REITs. One is an equity REIT, and that's basically what you think of a REIT is um, a, an equity REIT. They're the majority of them. They own or operate income producing real estate and the market often refers to them simply as REIT uh, without saying equity REITs. The other type of REITs are mortgage REITs or M REITs. They provide financing for income producing real estate. They either purchase or originate mortgages and mortgage backed securities. They earn income from the interest on these investments, but there is a disadvantage to a mortgage REIT, and that is it doesn't have the price appreciation of an equity REIT. You know, the property goes up in value as you own an equity REIT. This, most mortgages are fixed, and there's no way to gain more um, money from a, a particular one. Um, how do you find a great REIT to invest in? Look at the types of properties in the portfolio um, and look at the expected income growth from those properties. Um, then look at the relative valuation of most REITs within that same subsector. Are, are you, the one you're looking at, is it close or better than or less than? Look at the quality of the management and then the safety of the balance sheet couple terms to know, and I'm sure you've come across them now, are one is FFO, funds from operation. It's an accounting term that refers to the cash flows generated by the operation of a business. FFO commonly used in reference to the cash flows from a REIT. Real estate companies use FFO as a performance benchmark. You too, as an investor, can use FFO for the same purpose. The other term to know, make sure you know, is net operating income, NOI. It's a calculation used to analyze real estate investments that generate income. All revenue from the property minus all reasonably necessary operating expenses is the net operating um, income. Um, 
some of the important qualities you want, to, I've mentioned a couple of them, but here they're listed, seven of them. Um, you want outstanding proven management, you want access to capital to fund your growth, balance sheet strength, sector and geographical focus. You don't want them all over the map. You want them one area and they get to know it well. Uh, there should be substantial insider uh, ownership. Um, they should have a low payout ratio and they should have um, absence of conflicts of interest. Um, I, I guess we can talk about uh, the um, payout ratio right here. Oftentimes when you're looking at REITs, they will be bragging about how great their yield is, but it's important to also know what the payout ratio is. So the yield is just the money you're making between the dividends they pay and the price you paid, but the payout ratio is what percentage of those incomes, it, of that income they make has to be paid out to you. Um, you'd like a payout ratio somewhere around 50%. And um, there's not a whole lot of them that are that low. And it gets dangerous when the payout ratios are 105%, 120%, 130%. Where are they getting that money to pay out the dividends to you? And that, that is a problem. Um, and you need to be aware of what their payout ratio is when they're doing it. Um, I was going to say something else about the payout ratio. Let me just see. But, um, uh, well, you can. Uh, it can be found in the SSG, but a lot of times you just can Google it. You can Google the yield of the company you're looking at and Google the payout ratio. Um, and, and do know that because you want to have money. The reason to have a low payout ratio is they have money then to grow their business, to buy back shares, to buy new property, all those kind of things that you do with money. Um, and one way to look at it, it, suppose that a company that you're looking at has to pay out $100,000 in dividends this year, and they're telling you that's 40% of their um, income. That means they have taken in $250,000 in income. <laughs> and that leaves 60% for them to grow their business. So that's a company you'd be very interested in being in rather than one that has to find more money in order to pay out the dividends they owe each year. Um, I think we talked a little bit about appropriate, appropriate read accounts. And normally you don't buy it in an investment club because um, of the tax that's involved, but <laughs> in your club it's great. Tax deferred accounts are best. So taxes are not an issue with IRAs or Roth IRAs. And as I said before, REITs are taxed at ordinary income rates rather than the lower qualified dividend rate. And that's for you, the taxpayer. The REIT itself doesn't pay taxes because you, the investor, pay the taxes. <laughs> I don't know why I'm coughing right now. Um, we talked about the appropriate accounts. Um, following your REIT portfolio, it's almost like any portfolio you follow. What are you gonna look at? You wanna closely monitor your REITs, including quarterly NOI and the FFO performance. You want to diversify your REIT portfolio with at least 10 companies. And there's over 200 publicly traded REITs, so that's not difficult. Ideally, those with strong balance sheets, you want one of those. Um, and also look at ones that are temporarily uh, affected by some challenge that might be a great buy. And then be ready to take care of market advantages when it's volatile. Um, world's best REIT ETF, um, that was interesting to follow. Um, historically, REITs have been the best performing equity class 90% of the world's millionaires have made their fortunes in real estate. Ultimate low hassle way of ben benefiting from rental properties. Vanguard Re Index, each exchange rated fund, generally viewed as the gold standard of REITs, and that's VNQ. And you no know, sooner hear that than the next statement is 
iShares Global REIT offers a better long-term income investment opportunity with a much higher yield, stronger dividend growth history, and moderate exposure to international REITs. And that's ticker symbol is IYR. But years ago, when I was learning from Ellis Traub, he talked about mutual funds, and you can look like at an exchange-traded fund in REITs just like that. He said, why buy a mutual fund? There are dogs, even in the best mutual funds. Find the best companies and only buy the best companies. In fact, at the time, he told us that there were probably only 50 stocks worth buying. And I thought, why are we all doing all this? Why don't you just tell us what the 50 are? But of course, that changes from day to day and what's going on. So you have to do your work when buying them. Um, there's a lot of REIT sectors. Um, there's apartments, billboards, cell tower, data center, experience, healthcare, hotel, industrial, mall, manufactured housing, office, self-storage, single family rental, strip mall, student housing, and triple net lease. Um, when you're talking about some of these sectors, it isn't immediately clear what they're talking about. When they say manufactured housing, First time I saw that, I thought, are we going to be buying some um, mobile homes? But it, it doesn't mean that at all. It's mobile home parks. And a couple of these sectors are NIMBY stocks. They're very difficult to get new ones because nobody wants them in their backyard. So the manufactured housing, the cell towers, and the self-storage, all of them are um, NIMBY. Nobody wants any more. In fact, when you're talking about self-storage, there are more self-storage facilities in this country than there are Starbucks and McDonald's combined. Yet, there still are some good self-storage um, companies that you can invest in. And um, people, you look at triple net lease, and what does that mean? And that means the renter, your tenant, pays for the taxes, insurance, and maintenance. And boy, do I wish that my rental properties, our tenants did that, we'd actually be making real money. But um, that's not how rental property is, is done. Um, a couple things, uh, there's a couple sectors that I like right now. I don't know if you're interested in that. Doesn't mean I know anything more than you do. But just being aware of what's going on and reading a couple of books on REITs, um, the one that I'm going to look into in the very near future are the experience REITs. They've been so broken down during the COVID thing. And one I heard a lot about REIT uh, lately is the VC, VICI Properties. And it's a gaming um, REIT in, big in Las Vegas. They have hotel rooms restaurants, golf courses, and they have 35 acres adjacent to the Las Vegas Strip. And they also recently bought out the Venetian and the MGM Grand stuff. Um, data centers are another place that appear to be good now. Amazon and the other cloud companies have to have some place to store their equipment. Um, the danger there is um, Amazon may build their own. They do things like that. So you have to watch it like you do any investment. Um, I also like some of the apartment REITs now. Other people don't, but right now, the biggest rental agency, apartment rental agents, uh, age is 20 to 34. This group is larger than it's been in many years. So we've got a lot of people out there looking for rents. And one of the ones that I really have liked and uh, is um, mid-American apartment communities. It's the largest prime, uh, it's one of the largest ones, and they invest in suburban sunbelt areas, not in the rust belt northeast where it's cold and snowy. In healthcare, you have healthcare in your portfolio. That's always good. One that I like is medical properties. Um, they only invest in hospitals, and as we've seen during the pandemic, Doctors' visits are online. They could stop going to office buildings or at least use a very minimal space compared to pop to before, but they're always going to need hospitals. People have to be put on ventilators and they can't do that virtually, so they have to do it. And I see that you uh, have one of my favorite companies, and that's Innovative Industrial Properties. 
But you might also want to look at a traditional industrial REIT, something like Prologus is a one. And again, you raise it to Amazon. They have to have some place to store and ship their goods from. Um, and Prologus has a great website, and they show you how they make their um, business work. And it's like a three-level war warehouse where semi trucks can go on multiple levels to pick up things and drop them off. It was quite interesting. Um, so there's some good in some of the manufactured housing, Sun Communities I've liked. I like a couple of the office REITs, but they're not in anybody's popular list. And two that I like is one called Easterly Government Properties. It's DEA is the ticker symbol. And what it is, they serve the critical missions of the federal government that do not go out of style or favor. Something like the IRS, ICE, DEA, VA. Of course, you no sooner say that, and a year or two ago, they were talking about taking ICE out of there, but that hasn't happened. And another office one I kind of like is Alexander Real Estate Equities. They're an urban life sciences. They're usually connected to a university so they can do the research, i.e. all the COVID research and everything. So those are good. Um, there's a couple interesting storage one, Life Storage and Cube Smart. Um, the single family rentals is another REIT that's interesting. Invitation Homes is, is having Pulte, builders build them 5,000 homes in the next couple of years for them to rent out. And those of you that live in the local Sacramento area, there's a big invitation homes subdivision in Roseville across from the Bel Air. It's called Main Street and it's just filled with 70 or 80 young rentals and people, but they don't like to have the responsibility of, of a, their own house and they like having somebody else fix it. And then we did talk about triple net leases and what it means. And there's always the power three in the triple net leases. There's national retail properties, which is NNN. And frequently you see their TV commercials on TV. And this is a company that supports better investing. And they usually are a presenter at the Better Investing National Convention. Another one in that power three is realty income. They've had 50 years of dividends paid out without increases or drops. And the other one is the Warren Buffett Company, um, the store capital. So I think that's basically what I had to say. And if there's any questions, we can go from there. Thank you so much, Carol. You did not mention anything. Cell tower. Actually, we're going to present cell tower tonight. The um, well, that's not, I, I have one. I have um, Crown Castle in my own portfolio and it's done well. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting, and I can't refer back to my research, but I remember that they felt that uh, Crown Castle was going to be better in the 5G than American Tower. I have to refer to why that's so. I just remember that was there. Um, but, you know, your cell towers, you got to watch that, not in my backyard, but there's a lot of money that's being made by cell towers. In fact, some of the big carriers are very distraught that they sold out their cell towers about 15 or 20 years ago, wishing they had kept them. But I don't think they have their money now to buy them back, but they wish they had kept them. Mm. Um, we will present Crown Castle and American Tower. And so hopefully you can give us some feedback when we present. And to, we will show SSG, FFO, all that. Um, okay. So maybe you can give us some feedback. I um, did see that you were going to do that. And I did look at the dividend yields and the payout ratios of both of those companies. American Tower has a yield of 2.2% and a payout ratio of 101%. Uh, Crown Castle has a yield of 3.1, but their payout ratio is 183%. There's no way that's sustainable. It's mm. way too high. That's, um, that's, we are, see, that's the part that we did not understand. I never looked into I tried to understand what that is. I'm so glad that you mentioned that. So definitely when we look at the SSG, we will evaluate that, the payout okay. ratio and, uh, and yield. And yeah, also and, I want to mention, yeah, go ahead. Did I make it clear what the payout ratio is? You said it's the percentage the company pays to the investors? 
the per it's percentage the per of income. Yeah, the percentage of their earnings that they oh, have earnings. to pay out to uh -huh. the to the um, investors. And when somebody has to pay out 183%, they didn't earn the money. Where are they going to get it? And they can't uh, grow their business. But I tend to think the reason some of these payout ratios are real high this year is that their net income hasn't been so high during the downturn that COVID. So it, it might be worth looking a couple of years back to see if they had better payout ratios and thinking that they might come back to that. So you were saying 50% which uh, average 50% is sustainable is something that we should look at it. Not yeah, and I, I, 60 is probably good too. Oh, 60. But, okay. Uh, but the the higher the payout ratio, the more questionable, or you know, you got to look for mm. what's going on and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to mention to everybody, Carol is going to teach um, REITs at the Better Investing National Convention this year. It got postponed for last year because COVID. And I have seen her, I'm sorry she doesn't have a PowerPoint today, but I have seen her slides just looked amazing, have much more detailed information. Um, but today she just gave us a taste about uh, REITs and cover some basics, give us some uh, basic knowledge of the REITs. Even though we have IPR, we had it for a while, but we, uh, we, we would love to learn more. So tonight is just great time when we will show cell tower and you can maybe give us more of a input how we do and what to evaluate like a payout ratio as such okay, okay. thank you carol you're welcome okay did you want to take the oh yeah sure uh we are going to present okay yeah i can take the screen uh okay so for this month's stock study, um, we are doing a REIT, real estate sector. Um, we want to talk about, you know, why we're doing this, why we choose this sector and why did we pick the sector and the companies. And the companies that we're going to present is American Tower and a Crown Castle, International, AMT and CCI. So, um, you know, in the last couple of months of our meeting, we decided to do a sector, diving into sectors to do challenges, make sure that whatever the companies that we have in each sector is really solid, still remain solid, whether into trend or, you know, keep holding or buy more. Uh, we have IIPR. IIPR is facing government regulatory challenges down the road. So we are going to have a guest speaker, Kimberly Cowgile. She is one of my friends who works as a very successful entrepreneur who works in the cannabis industry. Uh, she will give an education topic at the, our March meeting. I'm collecting questions for all members so she can uh, address those questions that we have. And also we want to synchronize things that Carol gave us education topic on reads. We thought we can also just go ahead and do a reads. To synchronize the study with our education topic tonight. We want to examine the REITs sector, REITs industry to look for replacement. You know, if IPR still is a stronghold or should we replace it? Um, based on our study, and uh, we learned this from REITs.com, REITs have historically performed well during periods of monetary inflation, like right now, you know, we have a bit high inflation um, in terms of market returns and operating fundamentals. Uh, also, from the last two quarters, um, REITs.com suggests they're likely to perform well if we enter into a sustained um, inflational environment, which where we are now. Uh, so we used better investing screen uh, to look for REITs. We search sales up to growth rate up to 12%, greater than 12%, and earnings also greater than 12%. And so uh, it gave us 11 companies, and we were screening just to look the upstreet parallel. We tried to just to see the graphs, the upstreet parallel, even though we know we should not look at the earnings. Earnings for REITs is not really earnings. It's called FFO. What does that stand for again? FFO? Joanne, help me. Or Carol? Something operational. 
funds from operational. Yeah. Funds for operational. Yes, funds for operational. So anyway, we just kind of a preview these the these three graphs, and then we found that American Tower uh, and a Crown Castle International and Power Ridge are three met our uh, uh, graphically, visually, the visual representation you know, looking good. But however, for the power read, it was just so small. The sales is at 4 million. And I know that noticed the CEO has multiple titles, the CEO, CFO, secondary treasurer. I just felt that it's a higher risk. Uh, they do a cannabis farming, actually leasing their uh, lands for, um, it's, it, it was a real railroad company i think now they are acquired doing uh, cannabis i thought oh that sounds interesting but just too small we just felt that not enough it's very difficult for us to collect enough information uh, to support our study so then we decided to just do the cell tower as we present so i'm going to talk about this industry so what is a cell tower so cell tower also known as a uh, cell sites where the uh, electronic communication equipment antenna are mounted. So that allowing the surrounding area to use wireless communication devices like our cell phone, telephone radios. And the cell towers are usually built by tower company or a wireless carrier when they expand their network coverage or capacity that way providing a better reception signal in that area. So on the picture to the right, this graph I found is, even though it's 2016, but the revenue for cell towers, there are three largest cell tower company, Crown Castle, American Tower, and SBA. The revenue is $11.2 billion. And the revenue from four largest wireless carrier, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Spring, back 2016 is already $191 billion. So I, yeah, American Tower, Crown Castle, SBA, the three largest, they have the most tower account, uh, as you can see here. So how does uh, the cell, cell tower work? We, there are about over 300 million cell phones being used every day in the United States. Wherever a call, phone call, um, the, the cell phone is used, it emits a radio frequency. That's how we received uh, by the nearest the cell tower an antenna. And uh, uh, once the cell tower receives a signal, it will transmit the signal to a switching center. This allows the call to be connected either to our mobile phone or to our telephone network. I don't know. Yeah, some of us do have a telephone network. Most of us I'm using, I cancel my telephone, I only use a cell phone. Um, to the right, uh, Jan's house, this is the infrastructure like everybody, like today, everyone's house will look like that, right? We have a modem, we have a router, we have a desktop printer, we have a laptop, we may have iPad, you know, Amazon Fire, multiple cell phones. So this is um, our, um, today's uh, everybody's a household, most, most of us in the United States. So we, the cell tower that we want to present is really, we keep hearing about 5G, there's 5G war with China and the United States have a race. I will show the slide in the future. So I wanna briefly talk about what is a 5G. Uh, 5G uh, stands for the fifth generation of a mobile network. You know, we had a, Back in 1980s, we only have a basic voice as 1G analog. And then 2G, we had a voice um, a system, uh, I think a short messages, SMS, mess text messages, sort of, voicemail. Year 2000, we got a 3G and then 4G LT, we had a mobile video, right? So the speed is about 100 megabyte per second. But for 5G, as much more immersive and industrial, and which is right now, the speeds up to 10 gigabyte, that is like a hundred times faster. I'm going to talk about next slide is how 5G meant to us as everyday, as a, uh, you know, uh, everyday user. Uh, but 5G cannot cover big geographic, ge geography areas because it requires network, small cells, uh, um, the towers cannot go much further than 330 feet and cannot be positioned higher than 50 feet above the ground. So that could be the one of the reasons that we think American Tower could be 
American Tower has small cells. Joanne is going to talk about small cells, American Tower in, um, in the future slides, but we're thinking that could be one of the reasons. Um, and how the 5G got evolutionized. Uh, in 2G, 1996, 2020, about 24 years life cycle, we had a 2G. Uh, and then we launched a 3G in 2002 and I have uh, another about 20 years. Then we had a 4G. And even though 5G just started about 2008, 2019, uh, but the company believed that 4G is still going to be dominant. It will have another 10 years to come. So right now is what, 2022? It will be about six years, six or eight years to go before it really roll out the 5G, mature to 5G. So right now the 5G basically is like infant. So what does a 5G mean for users like us, right? So there are a few things that uh, impact our lives. One is a lower latency. So what that means is that if we play games, a lot of us don't play gaming, but much faster, or we're streaming, right? We're streaming Netflix or Amazon or Apple TV. So have much faster, have much lower latency and a speed, right? Uh, uh, the much fast speed to access our content, our video, our, you know, anything we use today, use our phone, uh, high density. So number of internet things, connected device expect to be rise exponentially. Internet things, so we have uh, mentioned this before because we have a chips company, right? So at home, we have what? We have a thermostat, we have a Nest. Right, so on my phone, I can, you know, turn on my, my, if I know before one hour before I leave party, I can turn on my thermostat to the temperature that I want it. Or a thermostat is smart enough that knowing what temperature I like, at what time I will be home, I have a sensor. Uh, another example I was giving is like my mom, she has a washing machine. My brother can, she does not know how to use it. My brother could use it on, from his cell phone you know, just turn off for her. So it's internet of things just everywhere. And uh, more capacities, meaning that uh, we can have uh, networks will be able to carry a heavier content load, have uh, more videos, more pictures on our phone, not like used to, you know, we have a small memory, now it can, can carry more capacity, less energy, right? Today's new phones can, um, has a much, uh, the, the, the battery life is uh, extended and much, uh, lasts much long, not like I used to every night I have to charge it. Now I don't have to. Next day morning, I still have a 80%, 85% of a battery. So the 5G Mint, uh, it, it changes our lives now. But you know, speak of a phone is that you have to have a new phone to uh, have the uh, capability. The 5G can only support a new phones actually. So how can 5G fill the U.S. Uh, economy? Um, so 5G actually can add up to 1.5 trillion to the U.S. GDP, large, larger than the annual GDP of 94% of the world economies. So there are a few ways that I have researched. I found out that how 5G can fill the manufacturing, for example, in a manufacturing industry, uh, 5G enable factories experiencing about 20 to 30 percent overall productivity, increase their productivity to 20 to 30%, that including uh, up to 50% of assembly line, they are using robots now, up to 20% asset life, the assets last much longer, up to 90% in defect detections, you know, because they probably maybe have uh, robots or because 5G, they were able to come up using some sort of machine can can improve the uh, work productivity. Another thing is the retail industry, as where we know, online and the brick and mortar, uh, you know, 5G create a faster and more efficient shopping experience to increase the sales growth dramatically. Uh, in the how 5G can fill the labor, it creates, 5G can create as many as 60 million jobs across all sectors uh, through the economy. And the healthcare allows more remote post-acute care, home-based models, uh, saving, uh, can help save uh, greater than 30% of uh, uh, savings, can save more money and driving better patient outcomes. 
in the automobile sector, as we all know, you know, not the new cars, right? They all have they all have the capability. You're not like used to. We have a GPS, like we have a plug-in now. Some cars come with GPS. You don't need to update anymore. It's all real time. You know, if you have a Tesla, we all know how it works, right? It's just 5G helps the automobile sector reduce the severity of the non-impaired accidents by up to 80% because they have a they have a built-in sensor. Um, potentially saving 3.6 billion inclusion costs and reduce traffic by 25%. That also that industry also drive up to about 230 billion in total US GDP. Uh, 5G de de deployment timeline, and I mentioned, probably you heard of our news back then, how US, China have this uh, 5G race. So who won the race? We are not, we are, it's not done yet. And uh, um, North America, uh, it launched uh, from beginning 2020, and uh, Europe a little bit later than US and Northern America. Uh, uh, Asia Pacific in China, they launched, I, the last time I was in China, what, that was two years ago? I think it was, there was a small city. They were really testing the 5G uh, everywhere uh, outside of Shanghai. Um, so that's a timeline forecast um, about, so still have about four or five years to go. So as I mentioned, the 5G right now is just an infant. Okay, next, Joanne is going to talk about American Tower. Oh, sorry, not Joanne. I'm sorry. Reddy is going to talk about American Tower. Reddy. Reddy, do you want me to give you the... Do you want me to flip slides or you want to do yourself? I will flip the slides, yeah. Okay. He's ready, he's ready to show. So make him the oh, presenter. Oh, you can go ahead and make a, him a presenter then. Why my slide is changed? That's you. Yeah, but my slide is not moving. Oh. Is it? Maybe restart it, ready. Close this and, and restart it. I cannot close it. Go, go to escape, escape. Yeah, I did. Escape is not working. Okay, so do you okay. want me to just present that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Jay will advance the screens for you, ready? Okay. All right, so you make me presenter again. Okay. But you still need to get SSG ready. Go ahead, um, start. Okay. Okay. I, I will present the American Tower Corporation, uh, the start study. Uh, this company is one of the largest global read company has yes, cell, cell towers uh, over 2,500 countries and um, uh, $120 billion market cap. Um, also, it is based in, uh, headquarters are based in Boston, Massachusetts. It has uh, towers in uh, United States, uh, Latin America, Africa, Europe, and Australia. And um, uh, it's a very large company. It's a, I think it's one of the leading tower company in the world. Uh, it's what does it do? It's uh, independently owns and operates uh, towers and um, service multiple tenants, major leading uh, carriers, mobile carriers like uh, AT&T, uh, Verizon, and uh, uh, other international. Uh, T-Mobile and other international carriers, and it owns and operates uh, uh, in 25 countries. The customer basis for this uh, tower company is again uh, very solid from the major leading tower mobile carriers. Um, its economic moat is narrow, but it's very very stable for last several years. Next slide. Um, the, the assets of this tower company consists of uh, over nearly quarter million uh, 
communication sites all over the world with 180,000 cell towers through in US and Asia and uh, Latin America and uh, major okay we already went through this uh, initial leases are non cancelable non cancelable for next 5 to 10 years the the, the customers cannot cancel the lease also these leases have um, inflation escalation built in um, three percent up to three percent inflation is all automatically rental is adjusted and the uh, also the feature is that the the current rate of growth of uh, mobile data usage is growing 28 percent per year and this is expected to grow till uh, next five years at least until 2026 next slide uh, this is a typical picture that shows uh, where are all the different countries uh, the mobile towers are on the right. Um, on the left, it shows a, a typical tower. What it does is AMT does build, take the, buy the real estate or rent the real estate, build the tower, and then all the communication equipment is supply, uh, the installed by the carrier, like AT&T or Verizon. Um, the, the designation here is AMT is a, a tower the, the, owned by the uh, company, whereas the tenant's install, installed equipment is denoted as TEN. Um, so not every when you see a tower, not everything is built by AMT. A lot of uh, equipment installed by the tenant. Um, the major revenue as of now for the company is coming from three major US carriers and other the international carriers in uh, other countries like for example in India Reliance and um, the, the local to the local carriers next slide please um, the there is a lot of uh, uh, talk and the new technology is being developed what is called 5G and if the 5G is built up and becomes popular what happens to the 4G where AMT towers are uh, almost all the towers are basically now operating on 4G technology so what happens if the 5G develops um, th these are some bullet points that show the effect of 5G on the 4G technology 5G network is uh, usage is still it's uh, in infancy. It is being developed uh, right now, and um, for 4G is expected to remain a prominent mobile carrier for next five, at least five years, foreseeable future. The building of the 5G towers is slow. Uh, you need a lot many 5G towers because distance it's the the serve is very short uh, so every 300 feet or so you need a tower but those four 5g towers are much smaller but you need many more in order to um, the technology to work uh, 5g tower the technology is unlikely to match with 4g existing and being used all over the world for um, several years uh, also the other company the other mobile carriers are not spending much money on 5g technology because it needs a lot of investment um, that all this is means good for amt's existing towers because they are they have over quarter million towers a lot of investment was made over many years and it's expected to produce revenue for next uh, five to ten years and AMC also, AMT also committed to uh, spending um, money investment on overseas towers because overseas is not uh, it's way behind US towers overseas towers are uh, countries are basically um, dependent on 4G technology to for many years to come compared to US the new te new technology being for example crown castle uses a 5g and those are based on fiber segment business 
and it requires tremendous amount of investment capital and uh, time to build them next slide please um, the the opportunities for amt has is uh, it's a, it has a long term revenue stream because it has built towers and uh, serving major carriers uh, the leases are already made and uh, they are good for next five years at least uh, to 10 years and uh, the amt owns a lot of real estate where their towers are located and some real estate is of course leased long-term lease and they have high quality tenant base and uh, uh, it continues to grow with the new acquisitions for example two months ago in november 2021 it acquired a new um, new tower company which is based in us and it's increased its service in 25 different cities in the US. International markets are behind the US and they have to depend on 4G. Data usage is roughly doubling every two years, which means there is more lot of demand on 4G towers. Next slide, please. Uh, the, the, what is the, um future for uh, amt uh, it has a consist the, the uh, current amt operations indicate that it has consistent and recurring cash flow growth strong balance sheet it has a solid growth uh, driven new assets it's acquiring new assets through acquisition of the companies and um, uh, very good investment network all over the world a property revenue growth is 19 uh, percent because they own the real estate as well as the towers and the consolidated affo is growing adjusted funds for operations from operations growth is 13.3 percent and uh, organic performance with, is with the double digit revenue growth uh, it is continue to act acquire new assets and uh, it has very good cost control system problem the tax management and uh, cash interests uh, its management is efficient i think that's my last slide right one more oh, oh weak, weak, yeah, weakness um what do we need to watch for the as as of now amt is in very very good position but what do we want to watch for um the generally some analysts report that tower companies are overvalued because they traditionally sell at high historic pe ratios and uh, and also they are sensitive to, to um, interest rates and in uh, projection projection is that interest rates is go, are going to go up amt has a narrow economic mode but very very stable mode because it's all dependent on towers and the 4g communications uh, development of 5G technology and investments. Um, we have to watch both. How fast is 5G technology is developed, being developed, and how much is investment is flowing into 5G, and that may affect 4G towers, which AMT owns. Thank you. Okay, Joanne's. Thank you, Reddy. Joanne's going to talk about the Crown Castle. Okay. I'll just let you. Yeah, yeah. I'll just let you. Um, okay. Okay. So. so oh wait, hold on. Should we show the SSG? Oh first? yeah, let's do. Yeah, yeah. Let's do. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Show your SSG. Oh, Ready? Okay. okay. We still need to make your presentation. Yeah. Let's show us the SSG. Give me control, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you are able to see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> first of all, um, we had to take the, the, the uh, morning change, take the the SSG takes morning start data. Morning start data uh, does not plot the, it plots EPS, earnings per share, not the AFFO. But to get the AFFO, uh, either go to value line or I went to directly company for example i'll just show you the data i, I brought in 
this is the company data on uh, EPS. This is not really EPS. It is uh, being the AFFO brought by from the company financial statements and presentations. So I had to uh, the, do, redo the EPS numbers here annually as well as quarterly. This is very important, the difference between the, the REITs and non-REITs and EPS quarterly. I had to bring such all the company documents and get this data. Uh, there is some difference between the company data and the one reported by Value Line. Value Line calls it cash flow per share. So uh, you have to watch and I used here um, company data, uh, company AFFO data. Uh, and you have to go through uh, more than one um, uh, company financial presentations to get, gather the data because we are doing over 10 years plus and quarterly data over uh, three years. Okay, so just for the um, demonstration sake, I plotted here the uh, EPS D estimates, for example. Uh, if you plot the EPS estimates, projected by the uh, SSG plus or uh, Stock Central. This is how it looks. This is EPS projections. Okay, these are not AFFO projections. So that's just to show. Uh, here I used, uh, I went through value line, I went through um, different analysis uh, shares and also I chose to project from the quarterly point because uh, EPS or AFFO is very steady and quarterly once makes sense and uh, I used quarter and based on from the quarter point, I chose 6% for um, sales growth and 10% for um, EPS. These uh, again, if I project the numbers for five years using SSG, uh, how they fall in line with uh, like value line projections, I always watch that value line is conservative, somewhat conservative, and also I check those numbers with rest of the analysts too. Uh, my first cut has more details, but let's go through this one uh, first. And also here, um, you can see that um, sales is nicely growing, same thing with EP, uh, EPS, which is year AFFO, and uh, this company is really doing good. On the second page, uh, valuation and return, uh, you can see that the P ratio on I ratio is very, very steady. Uh, last couple of years, a little high, and uh, low is also very steady. So that gives me confidence that these. Uh, P ratios we can rely upon, and and then I chose about 27% for IPE that puts me $409 uh, upper price range, and you can see that current P ratio is about 22. Okay, and 27 is not that far high. That looks reasonable. Lately, it has been slightly higher, but last two uh, two weeks or so, prices has come has come down somewhat. The low price uh, um, is again I expect about the 18 to 20. I chose 20, and you can see that it is uh, predicting 188. But then I uh, went through other sources. Um, the uh, Last 52. I think you used uh, 80% of a current price. Yeah, yeah. No. I, I, I'm going through this. This is oh. the, the, the recent market low price is uh, almost 200, but I chose this uh, dividend support is 212, and this 212 represents also about 80% of the price that was uh, about uh, a week ago. Mm. And uh, uh, so I chose uh, price okay. dividend will support, and that gives me. Uh, stock as buy range. It is uh, the, the current price is 250 and uh, upper range is 261, but we are near the upper range. So we, and but last couple of weeks, the price has coming down good. 
and net the I put the notes here um this is the AFFO coming from 2021 q3 reconciliation page one and uh, supplemental pdf page 18 just to make sure that uh, people who review this know where it is coming from uh oh You can hit the back button. Um, back yeah. button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bring it. To, no, it won't bring it. Does? Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's good. It worked. So, um, the, the current evaluation ratio is a uh, 4.2, and when I analyzed it a week ago, it was 3.7 or so, which is good. It's a buy. And uh, what other numbers we should go? Compound annual rate of return is uh, total return is around 12%. Our um, based on average PE is 9%, 9.2%. Okay. So Carol mentioned about the payout ratio. So for this company, the average payout ratio is about 59%, right? So about 50% range. Yeah. So that means it's sustainable, right, Carol? Uh, where did you get that payout ratio from? Are those imported from BI? Are those numbers? So these these are predicted here, right here. Oh, um, yeah, can you click yeah, that green yeah. box? Uh huh. Forty five. Can you click that box? Yes. Payout is. 53.7 uh 21 data is not there yet but the average is 45. can we trust that pay ratio from morningstar I that's be that's because you've changed your earnings to ffo right that's where you're getting that from affo yeah Another way you can easily look at payout ratios is to look at the dividend per share and the earnings per share and divide them. And um, yes. that's pretty quick to look at for on value yes. line. And this company comes out to be um, more like 100 and something in their payout ratio. Oh. Yeah, dividends are right here. For example, 2020, 4.53 divided by 8.44. So you're saying um, that uh, what company are we talking i'm looking at the value line are you talking about you're talking about crown castle here no yep. amt 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 um and again bad times the um payout ratios go up but um you divide the dividends per share by the earnings per share so you can look at value line and just do it real quick and get an answer too we do have value line. Okay. do you have okay. value line open okay. it's, uh, yeah, right, it's right here uh, answer is right here for example 4.53 you're seeing my screen on uh dividend yes. right 4.53 divided by 5.8.44 is uh, 53.7 is this eps or is this ffo no AFFO. Is, I, cannot change, I cannot change the word here eps See, this is affo okay uh, one of the ways to do it is use the earnings per share and the dividends per share, not the FFO to get, um, you, you can eyeball it when you're looking at the um, value line sheet. Okay. Like when I'm looking at American Tower, look at 2020, your earnings are $3.79, the dividends per share are four fifty, and you divide um, the dividends per share by the earnings per share, and um, you get like... Um, I don't know about 80 percent i think dividends per share are four i got a calculator here 450 oh, divided by 3.79 equals gosh. i have i have i have on my spreadsheet you have your value line I, yeah, yeah oh it's 118 percent um, there's a book um, that's worth reading if you want to really get into dividends. And what is the name of this book? Um, 
the Intelligent REIT Investor Guide by Brad Thomas, and he goes into payout ratios and stuff. Um, I, I'm not sure it's really accurate on the SSG because of changing it to AFFO as far as what the pay, payout ratio is. I mean, it says payout ratio, but I think you have to really work with earnings and dividends, not the payout ratio to get it the way the experts are talking about it. Okay, but, but sh the true earnings is AFFO, right? Why should we compare it with the uh, EPS? I'm just saying what the experts say, how to figure out um, what's on the, um, and how much difference is there between the AFFO and the FFO? And that uh, might make the difference too, because I don't I know have, that answer. I have, I have the answer. I can show you here. This is my spreadsheet of collection of data. Uh, let me know if I need to enlarge it. Uh, okay. I, I see the AFFO. Where's the FFO? I do, I didn't punch it. I I punched AFFO, and historically, this is from a, a morning star. These two. These two are the numbers. I think you are asking a question. No, yeah, she's I, asking about FFO. I, did, Wait, I didn't so you punch can, FFO. You, you can't I do a comparison. AFFO. I just wondered what the difference was between the AFFO and the FFO, and that might make the difference why the payout ratios oh, are coming right. out so oh, differently. Oh, okay. So 2020 is 8.44. Can you look your SSG very quick? Your SSG has the FFO. I, my SSG uh, has... I see in the background. 8.44, right? Go to the first page. Oh. It's, it's adjusted to the AFFO. Yeah, Jay, not the FFO. FFO. Okay, I have I can show FFO in the company financial report. Well, oh, you were saying value value line uses AFFO. That's I think why we. Uh, were oh, by, by the way, there is a there are there are some differences between value line cash flow and uh, AFFO company AFFO. Okay. So value the, line uses FFO on companies that they print it. They don't use AFFO, or at least on a lot of them. But these tower companies or cell towers don't have the FFO listed. No, they say to use. They have a footnote that says uh, use the cash flow. Um, and, and that's another way to figure out the payout ratio too, is using cash flow. And when cash flow is slow like it is now you get higher payout ratios and i that's where i think you can give them a little room when they're really high in this bad economy oh, okay but the, the simple one is just because most of value line do have the dividends per share and the earnings per share and you can just do the math and figure out the payout ratio that way rather than whether we're ffo or affo on the um ssg no, I can, I can show you, uh, I'm looking for, I can show you AFFO and FFO in the company uh, presentation. Can you, can you show us the value line? You have it on a Google Drive or you, do you have it on your I have, computer? I have it, uh, I, have, I have right here. Okay, because I want to see where the number is so we can do the math very quick. Okay, they don't have, FFO here, but you but you can look at the earnings per share and the dividends per share. Earnings per yeah. share six point oh eight. Five point five divided by dividends five point five divided by five point five four. Okay, okay. These, yeah. These, yeah. Here, here I'm moving the cursor. Cash yeah. flow is FFO and uh, second earnings per share. That's about ninety nine percent. So I divide 5.5 divided by 5.54. That's, yeah, as you can tell, the ratio is about 100%. Yeah. And, and also just looking at those numbers, you can see just about every penny they take in, they have to pay out. Or, or more than they take in, they have to pay out. Four cents more than they take in, they have to pay out. Because that dividends are what uh, they have to pay out. So 2020, the earnings is 3.79. They pay out $4.50. And more mm -hmm. yeah. what did they earn right and but then look at 2019 mm -hmm. they, th that 
was the other way. They had more earnings than what they were paying out. So to me, maybe it's because that was before the pandemic and it was the way it should be. Although oh. previous year it wasn't either. So <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, I don't know. Some companies I think are easy to look at it and others are tough. And yeah. So I have actually a question about this company's uh, debt. Oh, because I heard REITs, the debt is supposed to be high, but how high do we have like guidelines like this company, like 70 percent? And I don't know what the um, the general figure is for debt for REITs. I mean, it's sort of like a bank in one sense because they're buying property all the time and taking out mortgages if that's what they do. Um, there's a lot on debt in this book, too. Mm. Well, they, they, don't they have high debt level because they have to buy the prop, real estate properties? That's what I think, too. This like a bank or any other uh, financial company yeah. that dealing it. Um, OK, but, Jay, oh, go ahead. Yeah, we can take a look at um, Crown should Castle we, and do the comparison. Should we move on? Yes. OK, hold on. Are you taking over the screen? Do yeah. I or use my screen? Oh, okay. Yeah. Taking over the screen. Okay. So I am doing Crown Castle CCI International. They were founded in 1994. Their business is a, a REIT and a provider. And in, um, in general terms, they're a provider of shared communications infrastructure. We'll get into the detail of what it is specifically. They are headquartered in Houston, Texas, and they operate in United States and Puerto Rico, which gives them um, the right to use international in their uh, company name. So 76% of their 2020 site rental revenues came from the major carriers, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile US Sprint. Um, they, their differentiation, so you saw Reddy's uh, presentation on AMT, which focuses mostly on 4G towers. Uh, Crown Castle has chosen to uh, get into 5G, which means they need to build uh, focus on small cells and fiber. So that's what they're, uh, I'll be getting into. So uh, currently they're at the forefront of an industry transition towards small cells that will be necessary with 5G networks. Uh, carriers will have to continue investing heavily in their networks as mobile data usage continues to increase at greater than 30% each year in the U.S. And, um, it, and the increase in Internet of Things and video trends make that pace likely to continue. Uh, Crown Castle is virtually assured stable growth in its tower business. They hold long-term leases uh, similar to AMT with contractual rent escalators and its costs have similar certainty and are highly leverageable. They, okay, this is a, uh, the difference between the 4G and the 5G. So notice on the left, when you have the big towers, um, you could have spotty interception there because of the, um, you know, it's needed, they're spread far apart, the towers. So with uh, 5G, they have what are called small cells. So you notice on this building, or there's a small tower there, or small cell that's able to um, uh, transmit the signal between the two large towers. So they're adding more high capacity in high traffic areas. So these, so what are small cells? So, um, so fiber fed small cells enable wireless carriers to add much needed coverage and capacity to relieve uh, congestion on their networks. Um, while 5G's millimeter wave spectrum offers faster speeds, it cannot cover big geographic areas. That's why we need these um, small cell infrastructure deployments. And in it's, probably more likely to uh, is more likely to be conducive to urban areas as so they can use street lights 
utility poles, slimline poles. And I think Reddy was saying at one point that you could they can mount them on top of buildings. So like apartment buildings or uh, corporations might have these small cells on their uh, their buildings. So uh, let's see. See, by increasing the number of network nodes in a geographic location, you, they can allow for shorter distance between a 5G base and terminal needed for higher data rates and lower latency. In just the U.S., this could mean that 5G networking will need 1.4 million miles of fiber. And this is Crown Castle at a glance. So, uh, again, they have... Uh, considerably less towers than AMT and uh, again they are mostly focused in the US they don't have uh, international presence like AMT but they are focusing on these small cell cells and uh, fiber so that's what small cells re rely on is, is the fiber uh, connection so the strengths and opportunities um, Let's see, hold on a second. Um, they focus on growing long-term high-quality dividends. They drive organic growth by leasing existing portfolios of greater than 40% well-located towers and 80,000 uh, route miles of um, high-capacity fiber. They, let's see, uh, let's see, allocate capital to discretionary investments that support long-term dividends per share growth target of 7 to 8% annually. They maintain a strong investment grade balance sheet to ensure consistent access to capital. They have embedded growth tied to contracted escalators, a majority of revenue. Uh, data growth expected to drive continued network investment. I think Reddy pointed that out for AMT as well. They're well positioned to capture network densification with portfolio of towers, small cells, and fiber. And they have a proven track record of generating growth through execution and capital out allocation. Let's see. So their weaknesses and challenges. So currently there's a premium valuation of the company. They are it's really expensive right now. They they're spending too much and some, um, some analysts consider them to be spending too much on small cells which are inferior to talents with regard to competitive advantages, margin profiles, and returns on investment. Uh, with a geographic footprint, predominantly in large metro areas, Crown's Towers are the most susceptible to small cell disruption, and its burgeoning small cell business is too small to offset a significant reduction in tower use. Uh, the T-Mobile <clears throat> merger will pressure tower growth as T-Mobile reduces the combined tower footprint and takes a major customer out of the market. Okay, so actually let me go to my SSG. Okay, so my SSG looks similar to AMT. Um, notice also that the price has come down recently there's been an adjustment in the market. Um, I chose 5.5% sales growth and 5.5% AFO growth based on uh, value line. Well, historical sales based on value line, and then I chose a, a lower um, AFO gro AFFO growth because I always feel that um, earnings to falling sales is a more conservative uh, assessment. Let's see, and their debt to capital has been coming down slightly and then jumped up in 2020. So let's see, their current price earnings ratio, I guess it's actually, um, price AFFO ratio is 24.5 and the uh, average is 21.2 so they are slightly overvalued and I picked 24.7 as the average high which gives me 242.8 forecasted high price and then for the 
forecasted low price, I use the calculation of uh, the average low PE, or I guess it's average low price AFFO of 17.8 and um, the estimated low AFFO per share of 7.52. So that puts the um, stock in a hold. Also, I adjusted one of the points that uh, was made before when Jay and I were doing the REIT storage units was to make sure that you um, adjust your average payout. So we, I changed this to 80%. It was, uh, I don't know what it was before, but that always needs to be changed. So this is actually not in a buy. Um, it's in a hold status, but I think it's a good company. I, I believe in 5G. I think people always want to have uh, more capacity and faster speeds so that the trend will be uh, will go that way. What some of the threats are is if there are new technologies, things change so rapidly that uh, AMT is taking the strategy that they're relying on their 4G. And then if um, 5G technology changes and they haven't spent all their money on building the uh, small cell infrastructure, whereas AMT is confident that, that sm sm because 4G can't, uh, towers can't reach over long distances for the, for the high speed, so they're banking on that their small cell and fiber uh, infrastructure will be the foundation for 5G. So that's my the, those are the, I, that's what I feel are the differences between uh, AMT and CCI. And now, um, Jay, do you want to show the um, the comparison guide? Sure. Okay, I'll make you presenter. Okay. So we're plugging three companies: Crown Castle, American Tower, and the IIPR based on the SSG, the tool that I are still waiting, have a six counts. And second best is American Tower, have three counts. However, I like to look at the R square, because R square shows me the stability, right? So IPR, maybe IPR is new, is a five years company? Do you remember, Joanne? Uh, yeah, it's pretty new. It's pretty yeah, new. Yeah, so maybe yeah. that was why. But look, the um, there's a five. There's no ten years data yeah. yet. Yeah. So. so, based on the SCG, the comparison guide, American Tower is in a buy. When we first studied this company two or three weeks ago, it wasn't. It was like two. 280 and then price got dropped so not into buy yeah those two companies do things very similar but however um yeah one versus the small towers a uh, small size towers versus you know the large ones um debating and the one's international company truly international because all over the world so I think our recommendation is uh, to do a watch on Crown Castle and AMT um, to keep IIPR since it is performing well. Um, we but we just want to have uh, a strategy in case legislation is passed that allows banking for uh, IIPR, which will change their structure. So uh, and plus we have to pay Hanny out, so it's not prudent to buy more stocks at this point but I thought we thought it was worthwhile to look into 5G find out more about the technology what I think is re really interesting is I've always wondered what the towers were that had the things going around them and mm -hmm. each of those layers like if you look at when you're driving down the road and you see a tower you'll see different um, layers of uh, equipment and each of those are kind of but yeah, like right here. Oh, back. Yeah. So each of, one of those can be owned by a different um, tenant. So and have different 
styles of operation. It's uh, really interesting. Okay, are there any questions? John oh. Patterson, you're back. Do you have any questions? Mina? Oh, Piero or Isla? Jane or anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. What does AMT just own the land or what do they actually own? No, they mean, own the they own that like that tower. The actual tower, just the yeah. thing that is in the air. Yeah. Uh, and then and then, and then everybody else puts their own stuff on it. Yeah. Um, exactly. No, AMT AMT owns many, many times AMT owns real estate also. Sometimes they rent the real estate long term. Right, so like where the pad is, they own that. That's why that yeah. picture goes at, at the door. Yeah. Whatever. So, so you see that they've got their logo oh. on the little fence around there. So right. the equipment is what they, um, well, they okay. kind of lease the, the property so that people can put their equipment on it. So does 5G just go on the same tower and they like charge more for it, I guess? Well, 5G actually, 5G is more the cell, small cells and the um, okay. They're fiber. Not the, got it. So they have to buy more real estate. Yeah, yeah. Got well, it. but with the 5G, with the 5G, they are using those poles, so they can put it on top of utility poles. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Buildings. Okay. okay. Um, there's a question about how are they affecting the airlines? Mm. Oh, they just had a um, something passed with the 5G. It's not doesn't affect the airlines. That was in the paper a couple weeks ago that they were kind of having it stall. There was 5G was stalled, but I think with further investigation, they found that it wasn't going to affect affect the airlines. Mm. Can we revisit? Of AMT. Would you want to look at the SSG? Uh, yeah. uh, for SSG? the low price, change to the low price estimate. AMT? Yeah. Okay, which piece? Low price. SSG. Oh, oh, low price. Okay. What do you want to change? Because now we are using the dividend divide low price. We can look at the typical low price. Which is by calculated, you mean? This 188? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? Oh, what number do you want to use? Average or low or yeah, average low. That would be fine. okay. 17.9. No, 20 will be fine as well. Okay. Yeah. 20. Wait, 20. Money. Oh, look at that. What's your price? What's your um J on J thirteen? Is that the last Friday? Let me uh No Thursday. Thursday. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just thought it's it's a good company, but the price is not great at this point. Yeah, it's been coming down, so I think it's a, on a watch. I would watch it. Yeah. But we're not ready to replace IP not R now, but this might, for if we're looking at real estate in the future, we might want to consider this these uh, cell towers, cell tower real, REITs. Well, like uh, Reddy said, I wish we bought this five years ago, but. <laughs> well, if Carol said the payout ratio is over 100%, that means so so good to be true? No, because because that is based on AFFO. So I don't know, we'll, we'll have to research that more, how to find the um, okay. actual payout ratio. Oh, jo jo Joanne? Yes, Pierre. Yes, Pierre. Now, I wonder if I can ask a question. I think it's AMT that, um, uh, has the international presence, right? Yes, yes. Okay, don't the other countries, you know, foreign countries have regulations as to what you can broadcast? Like, you know, propaganda? Oh, 
Yeah, but uh, they're they're not involved with that. They just are supplying the infrastructure. They're not involved with the communications. And I think most of the communications are tell you know telephone type. Huh. They build it. They build not a tower like, and they rent it out. Rent the space. Yeah, but I don't, are they running out to radio station like media stations? I maybe I, mean, I don't know. Any 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 communication mobile operators mobile channels use their space communication equipment is belongs to AT and T Verizon and all those people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess, I guess the Verizon and A and T AT and T they would have to deal with the foreign government. Yeah. Oh uh, no, you... actually I read something um in my slide. Um Piero, for example, yeah. in Canada, they will yeah. deal with a uh, Roger. Yeah. It will oh, be Roger, they, it will be the nice. Local, they'll deal local, with yes, local. yes. Yeah. I read somewhere, I thought there was a slide about public widget I was at the company's website. Local carriers, huh? In, yeah, in, uh, with your Europe, local carriers. Phone, orange, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, I guess it's worth watching. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Isla or Christopher, do you have any comments? Armina. Hi. Good evening. Um, hi, Isla. Hi. I does anybody know why the price has been dropping on AMT? Um, they're, both, they're dropping on both. It's actually there was a JP Morgan downgraded uh, cell towers and price got dropped. Yeah. Did that have something to do with uh, interest rates? I think uh, so. Not interest rate did not affect yet, but uh, um, JP Morgan downgraded uh, 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 let's see here. I'm looking I'm at my mm -hmm. first cut notes. Um, NASDAQ uh, news says uh, AMT is actually it's the other way. A NASDAQ news says AMT is oversold. With the RSI, the um, strength indicator, re re relative strength indicator, is doing uh -huh. good in around 30 lowest time to buy. Uh huh. Um, so he, yeah, this guy downgraded the cell tower reads. JP Morgan Ellis. Who's sick? I wonder if that has to do with uh, the fact that they are locked into these long-term leases and they can't take advantage of um, higher interest rates. No, they're three percent up to three percent interest rate is already locked in uh, as a rental agreement. Oh, okay. Yep. But that was I think that's what Isla means is what if the interest rates go higher? Are yeah. they still obligated to offer a low interest rate? Yeah, it's like if you have your mortgage at, you know, 2% and then interest rates go to 5%, the bank can't turn around and say, well, you got to do 5 You know, but so on, I'm the, just, I'm on, just, the, on the flip side, if interest rates go down, down you're you still have, stuck. Either way, you're stuck because yeah, you, have, yeah. you have that long-term yeah. commitment. So you're stuck no matter what. It, is going to happen. So I wonder yeah. if that has anything to do with it. Could, what does no, that mean know. that he sees potential headwinds from higher rates? What does that mean? Hmm. Higher rates could be is it, well, headwinds means it's opposition, right? It's a Tailwind. problem, right? Yeah. yeah headwinds is headwinds a, a problem for them. Yeah. Tailwinds so. is a yeah. Or higher rates. <laughs> yeah. So that that's what Isla's talking about. So that's right. what. So yeah, they may have trouble negotiating their contracts if the rates go any higher. Yeah. It has high debt to cap capital ratio also, mm -hmm. 85%. And well, would people would their tenants be willing to sign five and ten year leases if the rates go any yeah, higher? Yeah. Or would they be well, short leases? And you know, I mean I'm I'm just wondering if this would really disrupt how they've been doing business up to this point. Existing leases cover up to 20, 20 2025, 2026. 20, Already, and some of them go ten years lease. 
Yeah, but that's to Isla's point. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. Is it, you know, yeah. when when interest rates change, you can't. There's nothing you can do with whether they go up or down. You just have to kind of ride with whatever yeah. it is because you have this ten-year thing. Now it sounds wonderful to investors that you have this consistent income and you have this long-term lease. But what happens if the interest rates change? Then you know you can't do anything with that. So because you're probably a, borrowing money, you're probably borrowing money at a higher rate too. Yeah. But you can't raise your rate to your. You can't. Yeah. But you know, but that that's not new for this particular industry. I mean, yeah. anybody that deals with with money and mortgages and that stuff, right? Same mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Um, I do know five G is a tech is a future, but I just yeah, yeah. Hi, hi, Mina. Know. Glad you could join us. Hey, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm late. No worries. Um, you take were over. You to, were you able to catch the um, presentation? I got caught up halfway through, yeah. So I was able to to listen to that. my question. I just I think Reddy raised it was, you know, in light of the interest rate being such an issue, are these companies really that that really the model? You know, if there is that much expansion through land acquisition and these lease agreements, is it necessary for them to take big loans to continue to grow? Uh, I don't know, Reddy. Do you have an answer for that? I'm thinking this to grow, but if 5G is the future, if they, they, these two are the largest companies in this industry, you know, so who's going to make money if it's not them in this area? It's true. Um, I hate to rush everybody, but I just noticed that we only have 15 more minutes left in the um, the meeting. So can we go forward and finish yeah. up with our, mm -hmm. okay, with our um, guests? Yeah, Mina, you take over. Yeah, Mina, do you want to interview our yeah. guests? Oh, our guest hasn't, or our guests are still haven't, so we're looking for feedback, right? So let me just see here our attendees. I've, I've uh, recently. To sell something too? Oh yeah, well right. that's We're our business. First. That would be the first oh, issue. After. Got it. My We're gonna, yeah, we, we let yeah. the guests talk and then they can leave if they don't want to participate in. The, Try and switch up the administrative. Yeah. 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 A little bit. So I'm just I uh, just switched to a, a Mac. So here we are. Okay, I have um, a Pope. Is that the is guest here? I think is a question posed. Uh, we answered that the airline. Okay, great. So, are they online? Hey, Pope, hey. did you want to yourself? Hi, yes, yes, I'm here. Yes. Hi, I did enjoy the um, presentation. I'm retired. From, oops, walked into the other room. <laughs> I am. I'm retired from the um, communications industry, and and I see how much it has um, advanced. And my uh, uh, thoughts on the 5G is, you asked, answered the question about the airlines, which I don't think they really resolved it as much as I think that they're saying, sometimes they say they resolve things because of how it could impact um, people's desire to fly at this point. They definitely don't want the, um, the airline industry to suffer until they figure it out. But um, I wonder uh, the safety of it as, as they increase the, the strength of the, I, I'd like to see what the FDA has to say about it. Um, because with the FDA and cell phones, it says in there that there is, it does uh, transmit radiation. So when they keep increasing the strength of the energy or the signals, or the network, how is it affecting us? However, that's not how I feel as far as a, from an investment investment standpoint, but I do think about the uh, human, humanity of it all. But that's all I have to say. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And those are really interesting points on the industry. And I mean, I think uh, that's, that's it would go, go definitely to, to the strength of these companies if there are big health concerns. So definitely something to, to watch out for. Um, 
Well, we hope you enjoyed it and we hope that you'll join us next meeting and uh, consider joining the club. Um, I'd like to call on it Bertrand. It was awesome. I, guess, I just want to put that in there. It was awesome and the, one of the best educational segments I've listened to. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much. We were very happy to have you and, uh, and look forward to having you again. Um, Bertrand, are you online? Bertrand? Bertrand, you're self-muted. Hmm. We, can, we can move well, on. We'll come back. We'll come back. Yes. Uh, Janet Blazer, are, are you online? I can't seem to distinguish if anybody's online. These are the attendees I see. Uh, yeah. Janet, are you online? Self-muted, okay. Janet. Self-muted as well. Um, we have Kirsty. Uh, Kirsty here is online. Hi, Kirsty. No, I have no questions. Thank you. Uh, hey, but thank you for joining us, and uh, hope you'll join us again. Uh, Lou, are you with us? You also seem to be self-muted. No, Lou. Okay. Um, Max. Hi, Max. Are you are you are you online? I think you're also self muted. Okay. So I guess right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, look forward to having you again. Would be the same link, and we meet the third Monday of of every month. So um, thank you so much. You're at this point will be going to members only to well, to deal. With should we get um? Any feedback from Carol? Oh, pardon me. Carol's still online. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi, Carol. Hi. I, I don't necessarily have any feedback. I We do have to look into that difference between the FFO and the AFFO, which I will do and see what we can come up with, what it does to the ratios. And how we can calculate the um, payout, like you said, what was what was being shown on the SSG is probably not how we should be calculating uh, uh, the payout. Hello? And you, can I answer you that can. question partially? Yeah. Can I answer the question partially? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. I found uh, three for three years uh, FFO from the company presentations and AFFO are very close. For example, seven dollars twenty four versus seven dollars twenty. 784 versus 773, 787 versus 844. Yeah, that is close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's several ways to figure out the payout ratio too. And um, the simplest one is to look at value line if, okay. if your company has a value line okay. and look at the earnings and the dividends. Okay, we'll make that a note then. Okay, thank you, Carol. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Carol, thanks so much. You're welcome. All right, I'm not sure. Again, I just transferred to a Mac, so it's a little bit different Go webinar here. But okay. I'm not sure if, to how to ex, uh, you know if we should uh, excuse the guests at the, the attendees at this point or. Yeah, they can. Uh, we're let them know we're just doing club business. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I guess well, the first thing is the February stock study. We need sign up people to sign up or should we have a stock study as we we felt that is it too much because we have a 12 members and 14 stocks should we okay we can skip three? okay uh, just just a discussion i don't know I, i'm just well what we should ask is anybody want to do a stock study mm. What? But uh, won't there be a bunch of annual reports next month? No, that's March. Oh, we have March. two. We have two. Actually, we have Disney, I think, and um, Facebook next month. Yeah, we could just focus on that to um, to annual reports. Okay, that's. Are you guys looking at my screen? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's actually useful, wow. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we will have Amazon and Facebook. And Pierre, is gonna, could... Pierre, are you ready to do a moving averages uh, education topic next month? Uh, sure. It'll Great. help. Okay. <laughs> so then if you Pierre, need help, 
Pierre, yeah. I'll help you put the uh, presentation together. I can okay. That. okay. Okay. Because that means Piero has two assignments, Amazon yeah, but, and yeah, moving I'll average. Yeah, I'll help. But he he can do the moving average pretty easily, I think. Yeah. But what what about Schwab? Schwab reports their earnings tomorrow. But is that oh, scheduled see, for wait, I can change it. So Schwab is what Q? Is it the annual? It's the annual because it's the fourth quarter, which is the annual. Oh, maybe we don't have you do. Uh... Well, I can give you kind of a general kind of thing right now, but okay. No, no. Wait, hold on. We don't have the time, time right running. now. So wait. Uh, I'll Schwab talk. is due next month too. Gosh. No. Yeah. Yeah. Him. I'll, Piero, you and I'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? So we just okay. keep. Let's. We won't have a topic next month. Okay. So okay. what's the next? Uh, can you go back to the agenda? Yep. Um, okay. So. Yeah, can, can so. Oh, go ahead, Mina. You no, you're that? right. No good. Not to cut you off, but. Uh, we have to deal Hanny's uh, resignation is effective next month, so we do have to sh deal with a, uh, a pretty substantial payout, um, and we need to deal with how to um, to pay that out. And we d discussed uh, selling a few companies at this point so that we can r raise the, the liquidity to do so. Um, and, so Angie, and, that was, yeah. And and Mina, I think another goal is to reduce the number of stocks so that people don't have to follow more than one stock. Right, absolutely. Yeah, we all have, we have more than stocks and we do have members at this point. Yeah. So we need to even that out. So this is a good opportunity to do so. Um, and then maybe at some point, I think we also discussed, instead of um, always doing new stock studies at this point, oftentimes I think we should be aiming for uh, sector, you know, stock challenges or, or portfolio reviews so that we can just constantly make sure that we're testing our own portfolio and trying to do buy sells uh, rather than just regular buys. Um, mm -hmm. So, so that um, you know that kind of goes hand in hand, I think, with with how we have to deal with um, Hany's payout. I'm not sure if Ready, if you have the actual numbers, not to put you on the spot or anything, but for Hany's, um, how much yes. do we have on cash on hand? How much do uh, we need to raise? Yeah, yes, it's uh, eight thousand. Eight thousand. Uh, eight thousand and seven dollars. And then, how much cash do we have? Thirty-two hundred, uh, close to thirty-three hundred. And and how much do we have to come up with to pay him out? Uh, so eight thousand minus 30, the thirty-two. Yeah. Forty-seven, 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 forty-eight hundred. Okay, forty-eight. Yeah. Okay. My my suggestion will be we can take a look at the current stocks again to rule out the ones if we have nobody owns it. Let's just sell those first no, does anybody no, own no. Does, is it just hanny that owned fnv does anybody else own fnv no, um, I no, no. Sell, yes. sell the ones with where we have a um, larger portfolio percentages right I agree with Reddy. Maybe we should rather than just rather than losing some of the diversity of the portfolio and some of the education. Maybe can we can we lower our position in some companies? Or are there some we can just you know, well? Flex but on? we should get rid of some companies because we have too many companies for the number of members. Although I saw John Catterson on here. Is he planning on John? Are you yourself muted? Are you? Do you want to come back? <laughs> John, you, you John. Hello. Hi, John. Can you... like that. I'm here. Can you hear me? No, not yeah, really. Okay. Very yeah, faint. No. You're very okay. faint. How about this? Very faint. Your AirPods is low battery. No, it's a microphone. It's a microphone. Oh, it's okay. It has low battery. It just doesn't have battery. It's plugged just... in. So. Oh. Okay, I'll go to the AirPods then. Give me a second. No, you're fine. I mean, first I think. No, you're fine. You're fine. But... Oh, he left. Okay. Oh. So well, I'm here. I'm okay. here. I can. I can. Yeah. But yeah, I can join. I can get, take a sock if you want me to. Or, okay. Or, so that's or, one. Okay so we want you to resume whatever you left. But you know the <laughs> VP or this or that. We want you. 
Yeah. So okay. Just, so whatever I'm doing uh, last. So now we have 15 stocks and 12 people, I think. So we still need to get rid of three stocks. We need to trim three stocks. And how much money cash do we need to pay out? Amy? 4,700, 4,700. 47, okay. I make a motion to sell FNB. I second. Um, which, which one? Which one? FNB. FNB. Franco Nevada. Nevada. Oh, Franco Nevada. How much money we have? Yeah, 3,700. We, we have 3,700 or so. Okay. In Franco Nevada? We saw it. Just nobody. If nobody owns it. Second. Who seconded it? I J seconded it. Because I felt like a wasting resource if nobody owns it, you know? That's just, yeah. 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 Uh, two more stocks. If, does anybody have any recommendations for? What was the other one that needed a follower? FLT? Yeah, that one, Joanne was just, yeah, I followed that one. At... Joanne says it wasn't doing good. It wasn't. Now, how do we own that one, though? Two of us, two people own it, right? I don't know who else own it. Uh, I th do I own that? I think I own that, but I would get rid of it. Okay. Just like that? Well, well, well can you go to my iClub and look at the performance? Can you go look at my iClub? Yes, yes. I, I have it on the treasurer slides. Oh, yeah. We can look at that, too. Oh, my iClub. My, my, okay. Either way, what do you want to? Uh, what do you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. Here we are. Accounting. Go to report. Oh. Uh, reports. Which uh, one is it? Which one is it? Yeah. Gain and loss. Yes. Um, Fleet so, Corps. When did we have Fleet Corps? We bought it in 2017. Mm -hmm. We're gaining 40%. So we have about $2,800 right now. Mm. We did a gain 40%. What size is that company now? Is it a medium sized company? I can't remember. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I think it is medium. It's either medium or large, I think. Mm. Oh, we were also thinking, well, Byron's doing okay now, but that was maybe we, we wouldn't do speculative stocks, but um, let's see. Well, if we sell those two, that's enough money to pay Hanny out, right? Okay. Right. Yes. And that gives us 13 stocks and 12. We have Google left. I'll follow Sorry. Google. You can put me down for Google. Awesome. Okay. So what are we doing? Did somebody make a motion to sell? We got a motion in a second for selling F and B. And then FLT. I don't I motion sell FLT. Okay. Um, Mina, are you doing the voting or you want me to? Um, let me just try and signing on. I'm just having a a little bit of a hard time here, so. Okay. Okay, well, um, Mina's yeah. doing that. I'm going to uh, go to the next point, which is we're updating the club name to IMIC to be in alignment with other online model clubs that use the MIC um, in their title. So instead of I I am SIC, we're we are now IMIC. And I'm Mick versus I'm, I'm sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I, then I just uh, showed the education assignments in the next few months, but that sounds like it's going to be, um, you know, in progress as we find out who's giving what reports. And I think that's it.
until we do our finish up our voting. So did we decide no, Fe no February stock study? Um, Jay, when's the next stock study month? Uh, it is uh, April, I think. Okay, maybe while we're waiting for Mina, is there anybody that's interested in doing an April stock study? No? Who has not done for a while? I don't have the education topic. I have education topic in April. In April. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you want to swap? Do you want to swap with somebody? And I think any stock that are uh, worth of considering, uh, if there's anything, I can do a stock study in February. Is that okay? Okay. Do you want to do it with Chris? Yeah, I can do it with Chris. <laughs> that would be fine. Okay. And any other would like to join us? I'm wondering if you ask Mahesh because you guys are genuine oh. East Coast. Is Singapore the same time time zone as China? We are. Oh, okay. just, yeah, a maybe, thought, just a thought. Yeah, maybe do one with Mahesh. But just a thought. Uh, yeah. That's in April. Yeah. Yeah. Ask maybe him. February. It is February. That's it. Okay, so uh, that means we need to swap on Jane's uh, BRK annual letter with somebody. No, no, no. Ayla, April, are you? April, yeah. April, I would do the stu study in February if I find anything valuable or worth considering. Oh, she wants to do the stock study in February? You could. Yes. If we find anything, I can talk to uh, Mahesh. Yeah, okay. Why don't you, yeah, okay. let us know. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, but the problem is that April has more time because right now there's no any stocks. No, I mean, no, sorry, no quarterly or annual. Maybe we can, maybe you could find out if Kimberly can do her education topic in April instead of March. No, she gave to me. She, she has 10 business. She just had a baby two weeks ago. Oh, okay. So yeah, she gave me that. <laughs> it, but it might not work out for us because we have all the quarterly reports. Oh, I see what you're saying. On that okay, March. sure, yeah. I can ask her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, what does that mean to March? Just have no yeah. education topic. No, yeah, there's oh, okay. Yeah, okay. a ton of quarterly okay. reports. Okay, I will talk to her. Okay, mm. that's the idea. Okay. But then we still, <laughs> you know, we need to come up with something. For or maybe what? we could do the annual report if we cannot finish so we can carry carry over to <coughs> that's another thought okay right sorry, if it's not finished all right the entirety of fmd mina did you yeah all all fmv perfect you should be having that in your inbox okay it, okay and then did we did we do flt also What's the FAF? FNF. Oh. FNV. Oh, that's the. It'd be FNV. Okay. FAF is uh, the title company. Yeah. Oh, I thought FLT was the one we were supposed to. Yeah. Mentioned Ooh. FLT. Let's take a look at that again. FAF, 25%. Well, FAF, we just had it, but what, for not very long. We had a legal for three years, for yeah, three years, yeah. Who's following FLT now? Me. Oh. Okay. I'm so okay if you want to get rid of it. Do FAF instead, then, Jay? FAF, I think, but not really loves FAF. Okay. <laughs> first of all, I want to know anybody owns FAF. I do not. I don't. We only have one person. Probably Bernard. Probably Bernard. Do you think that he okay. would be upside if we get yeah, rid of it? Yeah, because, yeah. How, also, I need a follower for Google. Maybe John Catterson, can you follow Google? Matt just said that he's going to follow Matt, Google. Oh, Matt said Matt said he's going to. But if John wants to do it, he can do it. Yeah, but don't you follow something else, Matt? Yeah, but I own Google, so I want to follow it. So Me maybe too. give it away. I don't know why. I don't know why. 
That's good. We can't pay it. attention to Google. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, John can follow it. I don't care. Okay. John, either think, way. So I we need to. Yeah. Piero has two. Okay. Piero has two stocks. He has what? Oh, Amazon okay. and Schwab. Yep. John, would you like to follow either Amazon or Schwab? Um. I want to do you want me to follow two stocks or I can follow Google? No, no. What are you what are you following now? Well, isn't Matt following Google? No. Matt said Stop. Matt said I could do it if you if I wanted to. So okay, uh, was I that, want do, to. Okay, you do, do want to. Yeah, Google. Google. Okay, you, you yeah. got Google. Okay. I'll put you on for Google. I did. Okay, you already did. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Um, Mina, are you going to uh, do the voting for was it Fleet Corps? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear a vote. Did, the, did somebody? Uh, I see FMB. You did yeah, FMB. Yeah, FMB was sent out, but yeah. Are, are we selling any... FLT or no? That was the other one, but we didn't. Yeah, I would sell FLT. I'll second that one. Did somebody already motion make a motion? Actually, FLT is no, doing no. Oh, FLT we... is doing better than FAF. Okay, let's. I don't think but it is. You know what? You know what? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Okay. Was it yeah. a sell or a buy last time? I don't even know. I Wait, just thought it was no. the other one. Yeah, let's just get rid of it. Are you okay. Sure? I'm sure. Okay. So what? Who makes the motion? <laughs> the motion. Matt did. I did. Matt. I made it. I forget who okay. seconded you. And I said, I second. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Which one is that selling? FMV? FLT. FLT, I see. Yeah. There was just too many tickers with F. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't even matter which one. Diversification yeah. on the alphabet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too much around. Okay. It's going to go up at least 50% tomorrow. I, think. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So what what is the bottom line? We are selling FNV and FLT. Well, we don't know if we're selling them yet. They're up for a vote. Yeah, both motions are still open. Okay. All right. So I think that's it for um, the meeting, unless anybody else has anything. Nope. No, we're not selling. Do want? Okay. Well, good meeting, you guys. Do want? Do want? Yes. Yes. I, th I thought that uh, Heaney was just taking a sabbatical. He is. Yeah, but we don't know how long he's going to be out, right? He so we have to, we have to pay him, like, yeah. just for a sabbatical. Oh yeah. I don't know. But yes, yes. Uh, here's the reason why. Let's just say if we invest in real money, right? He's taking uh, yeah. sabbatical. We're still managing his money. Okay. okay. Yeah, we don't. Not participating. So that's not okay. fair to other people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he didn't mention that he will withdraw. That's why I was wondering. Too. Yeah, but if everybody takes sabbatical and nobody, if you don't provide input and, you know, it's kind of like a weird managing a mutual fund sort of thing, it's just, right? Yeah, oh, we're managing right. somebody's portfolio without right. them make, being able to make a decision. Yeah, I agree with uh, Jay. They should be... Yeah withdraw when even if they take a sabbatical they should withdraw their funds and then when they come back they can rejoin right start I, I, contributing depends on how long the sabbatical period is have you confirmed with him oh mina yeah. mina do, do you uh what did he say uh i haven't had a chance to talk to him about it just yet but um oh, yes yeah, let's see him can we should yeah. confirm if it's just temporary, we, we should wait. If it's really uh, a long term, then we should we will withdraw. What do you think? Uh, well, then, yeah, sure. Well, why do we follow up with him? Yeah, I think. Uh, Mina, can you follow up with him and ask him when, how long he thinks it's going to be? If it's worth taking a withdrawal for him. Yeah, for sure. Well, I guess when will we, we not do a withdrawal? If he comes back after two months? Yeah. That would be fine. So if he, if yeah. he comes back in March, then we won't. So he'll have to.
come back in March then. <laughs> so he only gets two months of sabbatical. So he yeah. gets, no, he got December, January, February. No. Mm. Well, I, yeah. Well, how about, how, about, how about I get the answer to the question? Get an answer, for, like, a, what's his plan? What is he thinking? Yeah. Is this short yeah. term, a few months, or is something, heard. oh, I'm taking sabbatical for a year? You know, yeah, just so see what he probably, does. My, my sense is he probably isn't sure. That's probably why he's saying I'll take a sabbatical so he can you know, meet the attendance policy and stuff. Huh. But I'll uh, I'll check with him. And if he has a definite answer, then I'll bring it back and we can decide. But yeah. Yeah. You know, if he, you know, if he's not sure, then maybe we will just withdraw and then he can come back whenever he wants. Yeah. When you talk to him, you should find out what's his real intention. If he's really busy now and he wants to take a, a break, then we should wait. If he really think that you know he's been with the club for a long time, he wants to have a change, then we should withdraw him. I, it's I think that's a very good point. If he's planning to come sooner, we should keep the balance as is. Uh, but if if uh, it takes years, then it's better to pay out. But who, this is who a, gets who gets to decide how long is okay? Right. Yeah. This is. Does he get to decide or does the club get to decide? I think club gets to decide. Well, it has to be yeah. mutual agreement, right? Yeah. Well, because yeah. we don't want it, like Jay was saying, we don't want to manage his portfolio if he's not participating in the decision making. So maybe I would say three months max. I think I think we should give him up to one year because he's. No, 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 no. I don't no, think we can do a year. Yeah. You can't manage somebody's portfolio for a year without them having any voting rights. Yeah. After a year, when he leaves, that he he will have more money. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, if he comes, if yeah. he comes back, he has to start with the zero. Then. What's what's wrong no. with having him um, withdraw now? Why does when he, comes back, when he comes back, he has to start with the zero. That's fine. It's not, not real really, money. Yeah. It's that, not may be, real but money. that may be his choice. Yeah. Let's just find out what he says. Yeah, right. exactly. Find out what he wants yeah. to do first. Okay. Uh, Piero has two companies. I can't take one, but I don't like Amazon. And and what's the other one? Piero Schwab. Schwab. I don't Schwab. have Schwab. Even though well, Schwab is amazing, but I don't have Schwab. Can I trade with somebody? What do you want? Oh, Joanne, do you want me to do a Guan Quan? Yeah. You do okay. a Guan Quan and I'll, I'll do Schwab. Piero is that okay? Piero? Schwab is a good company. Which company? Schwab. Schwab. Yes, yeah, Schwab is a great Schwab. company. That's I just I, I missed yeah. a I missed a deadline to buy yeah. and yeah. now it's just yeah. yeah. I missed it. And my money's in Schwab, so that's where I bank or do my trading. Schwab okay. is the is a star, is the one hundred and eighty two percent. Yeah, well I had it for two years. We should have we should have invested in Wells Fargo. <laughs> they, what? They're doing better, I think, than Schwab. Really? I, I wonder if we missed the banks. I think we I, did. Yeah. But even though I still hold <laughs> I on think, to I think it's my old think about banks now. Yeah. I, I still hold on to. I do not sell Ozark. my old because Yeah. Finally, I'm making money. Joanne. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I made yeah. money, but then I lost money. In it. Yes, I, actually, I own Wells Fargo. Oh, you do own oh. Wells Fargo? Why do you say yeah. Wells Fargo is a good company? Good for you. Yeah, but they you know the, the bad news. They have you know, the problem with Wells Fargo is that they, you know, they created a fake account. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, right? And yeah. now the um, what's it called the um, uh, the SEC, the Central uh, Reserve, the SEC, yeah. right? They they uh, ruled that um, uh, uh, Wells Fargo uh, they're going to be limited to what they can charge in terms of rates. Oh, because they're a bank. So they're still under the under the thumb of the SEC. Yeah. But they're not doing that great. Ah. Yeah, okay. they have yeah. bad news. I don't know where. Yeah, they don't have the freedom of the other big banks because of the many mistakes that they've made in the last yeah. couple of years. You yeah. may have a good dividends, I'm guessing, but uh, also too yeah. big. If I own bank, I will own original bank. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, jo Joanne, can I point out another little mistake? Yes, that we please. Can say? You know, on the iClub, my iClub, yeah. it still says you're a club. I'm sick. I know. I'll oh, fix yeah. That. We need to send it to yes, uh, and Doug Lush to change that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so now everybody has one stock. 
Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Okay. All right. So if what, motion passes. Okay. So what do I have still? Schwab. You have Amazon. No, you have Amazon. No, I have Amazon. Okay. Yeah, you're just down to one. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything okay. else? That's all. Okay. So. Thank you. What do you say, Mina? Meeting adjourned. Definitely meeting adjourned. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.